Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. After providing medical care to countless residents of his town, a robot nurse needs to be saved by his patients. Today we will recap the complete first season of the series Baymax, from 2022. In the city of San Francisco, a grumpy lady is checking her mailbox and as she bends down to pick up one of the letters, she feels a sharp pain in her back. Kiko then walks back to her house complaining about life when he realizes that a mysterious creature is approaching. Baymax is an inflatable robot that was designed by a young engineer named Tadashi Hamada to act as a nurse, helping sick people restore their health. Upon hearing the elderly woman complaining of pain, the robot's sensors are activated and it goes to scan her. After the scan, Baymax realizes that Kiko's joints are deteriorated and advises her to do exercises to improve this problem. Since the woman lives next to a swimming club, the robot tries to convince her to swim a few times a week for exercise, but Kiko ignores him and claims not to like the sport. Observing his patient's reaction, Baymax concludes that she is afraid of water and decides that the first step is to help her deal with her hydrophobia. After being ignored by Kiko, the robot leaves, but the next morning returns to implement the first stage of his plan. When Kiko leaves the house, she is surprised by a small inflatable pool that has been placed on her doorstep. At that moment, Baymax appears and congratulates the woman for having taken the first step in overcoming her fear of water. He then offers her a lollipop as a reward for her progress. In the days that follow, the robot nurse continues to try to expose the elderly woman to her fear gradually, in the hope that she will be able to overcome it as soon as possible. Furious at the creature's insistence, Kiko takes her crochet needle and a stapler and leaves the house determined to eliminate the inflatable robot. The woman then chases him through the city streets and, despite her backache, manages to catch up with him. When she finally finds him, Kiko tries to pierce him with her needle, but Baymax manages to avoid the attack. In that instant, she realizes that she has been purposely lured into the swimming club and will now have to face her greatest fear. Upon realizing what has happened, Kiko tries to run away, but her pain prevents her from walking and the robot says that practicing swimming will help her heal. After being overcome by fatigue, the old woman decides to tell the truth and tells the real reason why she doesn't want to swim. Contrary to what Baymax believes, she is not afraid of water, it's just that the place reminds her of her late husband. The man loved to swim and always invited her to join him, but Kiko was a grouchy woman who never accepted her husband's invitation. At that moment, facing her greatest regret, the elderly woman realizes that there is still time to enjoy life, and Baymax accompanies her on her first dive. Cass is the aunt of the late boy who designed the robot nurse and owns a coffee shop in downtown San Francisco. The woman is completely obsessed with her work and strives to serve her customers as efficiently as possible. Besides being the owner, she is also the only employee in the establishment, so she has to work hard to keep up with everything, without ever taking the smile off her face. One day, while taking the dirty dishes to the kitchen, Cass has an accident and sprains her ankle. Sayaka, one of her clients, tries to help her, but soon Baymax shows up to attend to her display of pain. In an attempt to get around the robot, Cass tries to act natural and claims to be feeling great. However, Baymax analyzes her and realizes that she has suffered a sprained ankle. After taking her home, the creature advises her to close her coffee shop for a few days, as returning to work may aggravate her injury. However, Cass refuses to do this. So he says he will take care of the establishment while the woman recovers and downloads all the information available on the internet on how to run a coffee shop. When Baymax leaves, Cass has an idea to keep an eye on him and installs a camera on her cat and begins spying on him. However, when Mochi comes downstairs, he spots the camera through the mirror and starts playing with the equipment. Because of this, Cass can no longer follow the images. Meanwhile, a line of dissatisfied customers forms in the cafeteria as they wait for the robot to prepare each order extremely slowly. Faced with Baymax's poor customer service, Cass decides to go into hiding and crawl across the floor to serve her customers. However, the same situation repeats itself over and over again, until Cass has another accident and realizes that her injury is even worse. Then, once again, Baymax shows up to help her and apologizes for not having lived up to the woman's expectations by taking care of the coffee shop. At this point, the owner says that she should have followed his advice and closed the cafe, but she did not do so for fear of disappointing her customers and losing them to a competitor. Realizing that taking a few days off is the wisest course of action, Cass asks the robot for a ride and finally closes up the store. Then she realizes that Mochi has, all this time, had the camera attached to his body and decides to take a look at the footage the cat has taken. At this point, the woman sees the loving messages her customers have left for her and feels at peace, assured that they will return to the cafe as soon as she is recovered. Days later, Baymax goes to a school to teach the students how to practice first aid. 
That day, there will be a talent show at the school that Sophia and Ali are very much looking forward to. The girl is convinced that they will be the winners with their yo-yo presentation and says goodbye to her friend to go to the bathroom. However, as she enters the cabin, she realizes that something is wrong. Upon hearing the young woman's cries of despair, Baymax goes to meet her and discovers that Sophia has turned into a woman. The girl then says that she is feeling strong cramps and feels ashamed for being unprepared for this situation. So, the robot says that he will get the necessary hygiene items and asks Sophia to wait for him. Arriving at the pharmacy, Baymax is confused and asks for directions from some customers nearby. Determined to provide the best experience for Sophia, the robot nurse takes all the models of pads that have been suggested. However, when trying to enter the bathroom, Baymax realizes that the door is locked and decides to empty his body to get through the window. As Sophia puts on her toiletries, the creature notices that the young woman has built a toilet paper hut inside the bathroom and asks what it is all for. The girl then says that from that day on she will live in the school's bathroom, because she is too embarrassed to go out there. Just then, Ali appears and informs the girl that the talent show is about to begin. There are only a few minutes left before the competition, but Sophia doesn't feel ready to participate. She claims that her body is very strange and weird movements are happening inside her abdomen, so she will not be able to make the presentation. Upon hearing this, Ali tries to reassure her, but there is nothing the boy says that can make Sophia feel confident to leave that bathroom. When the boy leaves, Baymax asks Sophia some questions in an attempt to understand what is going on in the girl's head. In this way, he discovers that the young woman is afraid of her family's reaction, because when her cousin also became a woman for the first time, everyone began to treat her differently. The girl then says that she is only 12 years old and not ready to stop being a child. After the girl's outburst, Baymax tries to encourage her and says that although her body is undergoing biological changes, this doesn't change who Sophia is. Encouraged by these words, the young woman decides to face her fears and participate in the talent show alongside her friend. Together, they give a beautiful performance, but end up having a slight accident on stage. In the end, despite needing a little help from Baymax, the duo wins the contest. That weekend, Mobita goes to the market to buy fresh fish, which will be prepared and served in his trailer. While choosing the best ingredients for his soup, he meets Yukio. The young man then asks if the cook has ever thought of adding new dishes to his menu, but Mobita says he can't do that because fish soup is his family's legacy. After they say goodbye, the young man goes back to his trailer and starts cooking. To the sound of beautiful music, he cuts up onions and mixes all the ingredients for soup in a large pot. Mobita is proud to continue the business of his parents and to this day uses the wooden spoon left by them to serve his customers. During the service, the cook is startled to see that, for the first time, his hand is very swollen and he cannot identify why this has happened. Immediately, Baymax approaches the young man's trailer and makes himself available to provide medical attention to him. The scan indicates that the young man is suffering from a severe fish allergy, which he has suddenly developed. On hearing this, Mobita despairs, for his job requires him to be in contact with fish constantly. It is lunchtime and the cook tries to get Baymax to leave so that he can serve his customers but when they seize the young man's allergic reaction, everyone freaks out and leaves. The swelling begins to spread all over his body and starts to itch very badly. The robot then tries to remove the fish from the site to help Moby to recover, but when he hears that he will need to take an injection to reduce the inflammation, he decides to run away. The cook drives his vehicle far away, but Baymax chases after him. His situation worsens by the minute, but he refuses to receive help. Seeing that the robot insists on chasing him, the young man accelerates the vehicle and runs at high speed through the streets until he ends up breaking his parents' wooden spoon and then gets into an accident. Before the trailer flips over, Baymax manages to save the young man, who ultimately accepts the nurse's help. After Mobita is cured of his allergy, the robot says that he might die if he continues to work with fish, and the boy tells him that he is afraid to make this change, because fish soup has always been his specialty, as well as his parents. However, Baymax manages to encourage him to take the first step and they both go to the fair so that the cook can taste the most diverse types of food. In this way, Mobita intends to find out what new dishes he will serve in his trailer. During his tasting, he meets Yukio again and decides to ask him out. Mobita has always thought the young man was very nice, but now, thanks to Baymax, he feels encouraged to invite him for a walk. After waking up one sunny day, a street cat goes out in search of food. He spots a man eating his lunch in the park and decides to distract him in order to steal the food. So the feline turns up the volume of the music the human is listening to, and after removing his headphones, the guy picks up his cell phone to check what is going on. Meanwhile, the cat takes the opportunity to devour his lunch and, along with the food, ends up swallowing one of the headphones as well. It doesn't take long before the animal realizes that something is wrong, 
as strange noises start coming out of its throat. Luckily, Baymax is passing by and decides to stop to help him. After a quick scan, the robot discovers that there is a sound device stuck in his vocal cords and intends to help the feline expel it. However, upon seeing that strange creature approaching, the cat is startled and quickly flees. The robot then goes after him, but ends up being viciously attacked and needs to patch his entire body to keep from deflating. Meanwhile, the feline rests at the window of an apartment and watches a beautiful puppy playing with its stuffed mouse, together with its guardian. Suddenly, Baymax approaches and the animal has to flee once again. He hides underneath a yam stall and is apparently sad that he doesn't have a home. While lying over a makeshift mouse, the robot appears again and the cat continues its escape. In an attempt to throw the creature off, he enters an abandoned building to hide, but Baymax goes after him and locks the door. While searching for the animal, the robot doesn't realize that it is hiding in its back and is confused to follow the sound coming out of its mouth. When he realizes that he has been discovered, the cat attacks him once more and jumps onto a very high shelf. He clings to the wood as Baymax tries to unscrew the furniture, forcing the feline to flee to the next shelf. When cornered, the animal is eventually forced to jump, and then, after massaging its throat, the robot manages to help it get rid of the earphone. When he goes to deliver a lollipop to his patient, Baymax realizes that he is running out of power and walks toward an outlet to refuel. However, he can't make it in time and ends up shutting down. Seeing that the creature is unconscious, the feline takes the lollipop from his hands and leaves. The next morning, Hiro Hamada, Cass' nephew, realizes that Baymax has not come home. The boy is Tadashi Hamada's younger brother, and since the young man's death, he is the one who takes care of the robot nurse. Immediately, the boy goes to the cafeteria and tells his aunt that he believes Baymax has been stranded somewhere with no battery. Worried about the creature, Cass throws out all her clients and, together with Hiro, leaves the house to look for it. The duo check the GPS to see where the robot has been in the last few days and follow its footsteps in the hope of finding it. The plan is to visit the last patients who were treated by Baymax in order to gather information about his possible whereabouts. Upon finding out about the robot's disappearance, the grumpy Kiko offers to help search for him. Next, Mobita is recruited to join that team and asks them all to come into his trailer. Finally, Sophia also makes herself available to help them. Meanwhile, a team of engineers prepares to demolish the old building where Baymax is. After checking for explosives, they interdict the site without knowing that the robot is inside. The group then searches the entire city and Kiko finds the street cat sleeping under a cart. She feeds the animal and begins to make friends with it until the rest of the team shows up. Seeing one of Baymax's lollipops next to the feline, Sophia realizes that he was one of the robot's patients, and Kiko asks for his help in finding him. The group then follows the cat through the streets until they reach the abandoned warehouse. They try to talk to the security guard and ask to enter the building, but the man forbids them to do so, because the place is about to be demolished. So they must find a way to break in. It is lunchtime and Cass helps Moby to use the new menu at her restaurant to attract the engineers while the rest of the team breaks in. Since the door is locked, it is necessary to use a secret passage to enter the building, and Hiro uses his microbots to keep it open. Then the cat guides Kiko and Sophia to where Baymax is and the two drag the robot out. The problem is that the engineers have already returned to their posts to fire the explosives that will demolish the warehouse, and the duo has not yet been able to leave. The feline decides to run to the top of the building and starts meowing. Realizing that the animal is in danger, the workers cancel the operation. After saving Baymax, the group is reunited in Mobita's trailer and returns home with a sense of accomplishment. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.